consists of two 3.2 kilogram concentrated masses positioned as shown on a light but rigid bar. The pendulum is swinging through the vertical position with a clockwise angular velocity of 6 radians per second when a 50 gram bullet travelling with a velocity of 300 meters per second in the direction shown strikes the lower mass and becomes embedded in it. So calculate the angular velocity that the pendulum has immediately after impact. Alright, so for this question, um, what we're going to be looking at is an angular momentum calculation. Alright, so the equation that we're going to be using is that oops, the integral from t1 to t2 of the sum of the moments about a point O dt is equal to the change in the angular momentum calculated also about the same point O. So for us, we're going to be using the point O as labeled. All right, it makes sense for all of these questions to use the pivot point if, if that is you know what exists, which often is the case. So we're going to be able to cancel out the left hand side of this equation because time one and time two are the instant before and the instant after impact and negligible time is going to have passed through that period. So that means that the integral is going to be equal to zero always. Angular momentum is going to be conserved um, within this system. All right. So we can rewrite this as 0 equals HO2 minus HO1. So it's 2 and 1 are the different positions that we're going to be considering with time. And we can then write this as direct conservation of um, momentum. So whatever we have at the beginning, we're going to have at the end. All right. So let me just quickly jot down. So position 1 is going to be the initial position and that's when our rod is completely vertical and our bullet is just about to embed itself inside that ball. All right. And position 2 is going to be the instant after impact. So it's the instant after this little bullet has embedded itself within that ball. Okay, so for this we're going to need to calculate um, the angular momentum we have at each of the different points. And to make it a little bit easier um, to show the calculations, I'm going to label each of my different masses. So we've said that um, this rod here is massless essentially, so we don't need to consider it in our calculations. The only thing we need to think about is this ball, which I'm going to call A, this ball, which I'm going to call B, and a little bullet, which I'm going to call C. All right, so let's start with looking at um, what's happening at position one, which is our initial position when this thing is vertical and this is about to embed itself. So it's going to be equal to the sum of all of our different ones. So A, B, and C. Now remember that we have two expressions that we can use for calculating our angular momentum. They're equal but um, sometimes it's easier to use one over the other. All right so I'll just jot them up here. So one of the ones that we can use is that it's equal to RMV. So R is the radius, M is the mass and V is the linear velocity that it's traveling at so in meters per second. The alternative is that we have r squared m omega, all right? And this time omega is the rotational rate in radians per second. So starting off with, um, we'll start with a. So we know that at the initial position, this whole thing is rotating at an angular velocity, um, which we're given as six radians per second. So we're gonna use this one here, r squared e. M, m omega, sorry, um, simply because we've been given omega, um, that makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, we'd have to convert that into a linear velocity. So for A, the radius from point O, of, which is our point of interest, is 0 0.2. We need to square it, multiplied by the mass of A, and we're told that they're 3.2 kilogram balls. And then we need to multiply it by um, the angular velocity which is six radians per second. And because I'm, I'm not gonna bother using the cross product for these calculations, because what we can assume is just that we have a positive and a negative rotational direction. So 
if we say that initially this is 6 radians per second in the direction shown and I'm going to assume anti-clockwise is the positive direction we can see that this is the opposite one so when I sub it into my equation I should make it negative all right and that saves you having to do the cross product which would equivalently get you out um, you know that directional um, sign so moving on to the next one which is ball B so it's this time it's rate at a radius of 400 millimeters or 0.4 meters the mass again is 3.2 and we've got to consider the um, angular velocity. It's going to be the same as before since they're both on the same rod. So negative 6 radians per second. So the other one that we need to consider is the bullet. And for this one, it's going to make more sense to use the first expression um, for angular momentum because this one we've been given in a linear velocity. Okay, so it's 300 meters per second. So I'm going to use this expression. So going on to the next line, um, so starting off we need to know the radius and we're looking at of course the moment before it embeds into this um, ball. So we can assume that it's going to be at the same radius as the ball, so 0 0.4 in metres. The mass of this, we're told in the question that it's 50 grams, so 0 0.05. And we need to consider the velocity that it's going to be travelling at. Alright, so for this we would need to convert it into an x and a y component. So if we look at the um, x component, alright, the one that's going this way, um, it's going to be 300 cos 20. Alright, and that's its x component, of course. Let me just draw it in. Alright, so this x component here is going to be pushing it in the anti-clockwise direction. So therefore it's going to be a positive, same as this one. So I leave this as a positive in the equation. And the other thing we would need to consider is the vertical component. Alright, this one here. But what we're going to find is that that vertical component is not going to contribute at all to it, um, its rotation. All right? The only bit that's going to cause it to rotate about this pivot point here is the horizontal part of the um, velocity. So therefore, we're going to leave this one out of the equation because it's not going to contribute to its angular momentum. So if you simplify down um, this equation, you end up with 1.798 as the solution. So now all we need to do is repeat this process except for the second point of interest um, which is the instant after the impact. So again writing out our equation it's going to be the sum of what's happening for ball A plus what's happening for balls B and C and this time B and C are going to be like joined to each other. So I'm going to put them in the same um, term. So for um, all of these this time, um, it's going to make sense to use the expression for angular momentum that has the angular velocity in it, so omega in it, um, simply because that's the property that we're looking for. So I'm going to assume this is the positive direction. And starting with A, we know that the radius is going to be still 0 0.2. Um, it becomes squared, multiplied by the mass of A, which is 3.2, and multiplied by its angular velocity, which is what we're trying to find. So I'm just going to call it omega 2 for the angular velocity at this point. So moving on to the next one. Now this time both of these are going to be embedded together, and they're going to be at that radius of 0 0.4. Their combined mass is 3.2 plus 0 0.05. And I also need to consider the angular velocity, which should be the same as before. So omega 2. All right, this whole bar is going to be rotating at the same rate. So this can be simplified down, and it just becomes... 
0.648 times that omega value that we're looking for. So the final stage here is just to put both sides of the equation back together. So we end up with 1.798 is equal to 0.648 times omega. And it comes out to be 2.77 radians per second. And it comes out to be a positive value. So that means it's going to be rotating in the positive direction. So that's the way we assumed it to be positive. So that's the final answer to this question. The whole thing is going to be rotating at 2.77 radians per second in the anti-clockwise direction the instant after impact.